Hello there my RPG lovers and welcome to another video. Sense of Aura is an upcoming open world action RPG developed by the studio called Chashu Entertainment. This is one of the most interesting RPGs that I had the pleasure to discover recently. I've played the demo for a couple of hours and there is a lot to like about this game if you are a fan of this genre. Sense of Aura has a great art style along with a dark atmosphere and obviously a fantasy setting. As you would expect, this ARPG is played through the isometric camera modes. When it comes to the story, your character is the last protector of men from the order called Remnant Knights. The world of Talamel was struck with a cataclysm which destroyed the hourglass of time and shattered its essence across the land, creating an endless sea of sands. You're going to explore this open world by sailing with your ship without much guidance and the developer made sure to point this out. From the helm of your nimble grain wake, carve across the pearly ascent seas to confront the sources of this newfound terror, but don't expect a guiding light or a red X on a map. You'll chart your own course forward, behold the open seas, and choose the heading you best see fit. I'm really curious to see the design of this open world and how the exploration is going to feel without any guidance. I personally prefer this open world design with limited or no guidance at all, but a lot of things could go wrong if it's not designed properly although that could be said for basically all features in the game. Unfortunately, the demo ends as soon as you get to the ship and sail away, so I can't really talk about the open world design until the game officially releases. But we know that the world of Talamel has multiple islands to explore with tiered levels of difficulty. I assume this means that enemies we're going to encounter will have fixed levels with no level scaling systems, but I'm not completely sure about that. The corruption that plagues Talamel has created a horde comprised of both men and other Talamelic natives, the Venerable Ferrum and the insectoid Hive-Minded Hashara. Once varying nations have become an abominable army of undying malice. The premise of this story sounds pretty generic, like pretty much every storyline in ARPGs to be honest, and that's perfectly fine with me. Because that doesn't mean that it can be interesting to experience, especially because the sense of Ori has some choices to be made throughout the dialogue. You can experience a small part of this in the demo as well. The visual style of dialogue kinda reminds me of Disco Elysium a bit, it's presented in small chunks and it's easy to read. And you will have to read because there is no voice acting in this game at all. The story itself has a certain dose of mystery behind it which makes it more interesting. One major feature that stands out in this game is your personal settlement called Starspire. It's described as a sanctuary that you call home and its doors remain open to those who deem worthy of its hearts. Along your journey you will encounter refugees in need of a shelter and a remnant knight can see they find it in Starspire. Working as an optional component to the core gameplay, Starspire offers an opportunity to test your remnant traits of leadership and judgment. The choices you make regarding Starspire residents will alter your story and affect your fate, as well as the fate of others but only if you choose to make those choices. This definitely sounds like a huge gameplay feature which affects the whole game. These types of games don't usually care that much about different choices and consequences within the story, so it will be interesting to see how Sense of Ori will pull it off. Finding refugees throughout the world and recruiting them in your base kinda reminds me of Green Dawn a bit. That game has a really similar feature. But you can't experience this in the demo because, like I said, it ends as soon as you enter the boat. New residents that you can recruit in the open world are supposed to unlock perks like gifts of exclusive equipment and unique services. So, besides the story aspect of the game, it seems like the settlement will play a big role when it comes to the gameplay systems as well. That should make the exploration a lot more exciting, I guess. But what about the combat in this game? I think we can all agree that the combat is the most important thing in an ARPG, it can make or break the game. Well, it's pretty good actually, and it has some interesting mechanics. Your fighting style will depend on the weapon you're using. There are 7 different types of weapons, and they all have unique attack patterns. You can experience all weapon types in the demo and see how they work. You have a primary and secondary weapon slot and you can switch between two weapon types with one button. Besides your regular attacks that you can spam, you also have a block and a dodge button. The block button has a parry mechanic as well, if your timing is right you will trigger a counter attack. Dodging attacks is really important in the game and your stamina bar is your primary resource. None of your attacks use stamina though, only running and dodging use it as a resource. You can improve your stamina with specific runes that you can find. Speaking about runes, there are a big part of the gameplay loop in this game. Your equipment will have rune slots, and once you find some runes, you can insert them in one of your armor slots. 
There are different kinds of runes with unique effects, but the most interesting kind is the one that goes in your weapons. When you activate a weapon rune, it will affect all of your attacks and moves for a couple of seconds. For example, the frost rune I have on my twin axe gives me an ice block ability when I use the block button. It also turns my dodge ability into a wall of ice and my regular and special attacks will freeze the enemy. Weapon runes only work on a short cooldown period and they don't use any resource. Every weapon type has a special attack that you can use once you fill up the bar with your regular attacks. Enemies you're going to fight in the demo are not extremely challenging, but the combat is not a mindless spamfest. The one and only boss in this demo gave me a lot of trouble actually and I died more than a couple of times. It's a pretty solid fight mechanically and if we can expect something similar from the rest of the game, it's going to be a great experience. One thing that bothered me though is the weapon cleansing mechanic. It basically works like a durability mechanic, you have a bar that starts depleting every time you hit something. And you will have to press the button to cleanse your weapon, otherwise your damage will suffer a lot. I think this mechanic is supposed to create a small tactical element in the game because you'll have to time it properly. Your character's speed is greatly reduced once you press the cleansing button, so there is a higher chance to get hit, especially if you're fighting stronger enemies. I don't dislike this mechanic in general, but I think it's too aggressive because you'll have to cleanse your weapons way too often. It has the potential to be really annoying unless there is a way to affect this mechanic somehow in the game. The same movement slowdown effect will happen when you want to heal yourself, so having two abilities that reduce your movement speed could be a bit too much. But I don't know, I'll have to play the full game to give you my complete thoughts about this. Since I mentioned healing, the way it works is really familiar. It obviously takes the inspiration from the Dark Souls series because it works really similar to the Bone Fire system. You will find these resonance bells and once you ring it, it will refill your potions and respawn all enemies on the map. I think Sense of Aura was inspired by more than a couple of games actually. For example, the character models remind me of older Final Fantasy games and like I already said, the dialogue system feels really similar to Disco Elysium. The music is pretty good as well and it complements the dark atmosphere quite nicely. I really wanted to start exploring the open world and see what it has to offer, but I guess we'll have to wait. Sailing the open world with your ship in the game of this type is definitely an interesting idea that I haven't seen before. By the way, I played the game with my Xbox One controller and it works pretty well. The only thing I didn't like when it comes to controls is the sprint button. You have to press and hold the left stick in order to run, which is not comfortable at all. Oh, and by the way, there is a jump button in the game, which took me by surprise. I definitely didn't expect to be able to jump in this kind of a game, but it's quite refreshing. Certain parts of the map seem to be designed with the jump ability on mind. If all the locations in the open world are built with the jump ability on mind, it could make those maps a lot more interesting to explore. And not just when it comes to exploring, the fights could benefit from this a lot. And that would be all I have to say about Sense of Aura. It's definitely a really interesting game and you can try the demo for yourself on Steam. We don't know the exact release date for this game yet, but I'm guessing it should come out this year. Anyway, tell me your opinions about this game and how it looks to you. Leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, pressing the thumbs up button would mean a lot. Don't forget to subscribe for more RPG content. If you want to support the channel in the long run, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member. You can get your name on the end credits as well as some other perks like early access to videos, Discord roles, my plans for future content, etc. etc. That would be all and I'll see you in the next one.